As always, our show is sponsored by Memoria Press. You can find our curriculum at memoriapress.com. Welcome to Classical Etc., a show from Memoria Press that dives into the philosophy, culture, and heart of classical education. You're in the studio with Shane Saxon. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Classical Etc. This is our Christmas episode, and on today we're talking about a Christmas carol. In prose, what is it? In prose, being a ghost story of Christmas is the, the subtitle. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about A Christmas Carol, a book that we are giving to any Memorial Press customers who buy books right now and, and a favorite. And, but before we do that, we have a little activity. I know that most people who listen to this are just listeners. They don't watch. But we do have it on YouTube. And some people watch it there. And I would encourage anyone for the next five minutes, just watch the first five minutes on YouTube. It'll be fun. And then go back to listening to it. But before, what we're going to do is we actually have a little Christmas gift exchange with the participants. And do you guys know who got each other gifts? No. So this is going to be full of surprise and joy to start our episode. So Bryce is going to bring the gifts out. And the first gift is going to be the gift for Paul. So so tell me who purchased the gift for Paul. Oh, you open it and then you guess who got it? Oh, perfect. Oh, okay. So, Paul, right. you open it, and then you guess who got it for you. Okay. It's very nicely wrapped. Okay. Um, nice little wrap. There's a there's some yes, string there's, with a bow on top. Yes, and uh, no other present has 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 a bow on it. Yeah. That that indicates to me. Oh my god. <laughs> of course. And a weapon has been unleashed in the studio. Paul has a sword on his pocket. <laughs> oh my gosh. I did not anticipate that. <laughs> I think he heard Always you were going to be on the show and needed self defense. I think. <laughs> yeah. right. Always ready. Well, I figured I needed something to cut that bow off. Ooh, so, look at this! It is a very large book. War and Peace. Ooh, wow. that's wonderful. War and Peace that by Leo wonderful. Tolstoy. Yes, because someone maybe feels like Paul's doing too much farming and not enough reading. <laughs> it's what it sounds like. <laughs> but but Tolstoy is pro farming. I mean, Tolstoy's an agrarian writer, connection. so very this much might not so. Work. Um, Wow, I forgot how long this was. Um, this is wonderful. Now I have to guess who yeah, got who, this for who me. Who bought that for you? Um, by process of elimination, I, I have to base this mostly on the wrapping mm. because this, I think the marketing team did the wrapping. Oh, the marketing team did the wrapping. Oh, that's so. a good clue. Um, with that, then Martin. It was Harvey. <laughs> it was not you. It was what? me. Oh, it was me. I couldn't remember if you had read it or not. But um, you know, Ian said because he I didn't know, know if he got it. <laughs> he didn't know. Wait, 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 wait. You brought a gift, right? So you should know. <laughs> I, I, think, that. I think Martin still hurt that that you were giving me credit for his his oh, chart. Oh, for his oh, chart. chart. And so okay. he's yes. trying to take credit for anything anybody else. I'm does. sorry, Tony. We cut you off. Why did you get the gift? For- because we talked about it in a couple of podcasts ago, mm. and Paul never said if he had read it or not, but he was asking Ian about it, and Ian got halfway through and quit. And I said, oh, I need to read it. I've got it. I've got two versions, two different translators, and Mm -hmm. I haven't read it yet. And so I thought Paul could read it with Ian and me. Um, I'm not sure when, but there it is. That's a great question is when when am I going to get through this? Uh, I have read it, but it's been mm, almost 20 years. Uh, it's been 15 years. Okay, 15 well, you years. can read it with Ian so and it's me. So worth, it's worth rereading. Well, and it's worth reading this with is people. A, this is a, the new, tra- this is the Pavir translation. So this so is a new, this it is, is a, a new, newer translation than I think you probably, probably would have read. Good. Mm-hmm. Paul, if you read this 20 years ago, did you read War and Peace when you were 12? <laughs> <laughs> Close. I was like 17. Oh, uh, yeah. Gosh. Well, I, I knew yeah. he hadn't read it in a while. That's that's why I got it for him. <laughs> I can't wait to see your present. Okay, well, let's, I hope let's it's go not that for direction. Me. Martin, there's a gift, a gift for you on the table. It's that small okay. one, I believe. It's got your name on it. And it's wrapped no bow uh, in a, a brown paper wrapping. It's yes, a little bit now, I using, can't believe you. Using there's, his a, teeth. there's a little bit of decoration. Do you need my I knife, would like, Martin? Can I just Could say you know <laughs> that <laughs> the... Well, he's throwing. Martin, he threw a knife. Now he threw the knife. 
It was close. It you was close. Sh- people should definitely be watching this one. <laughs> um, knife across the table. They tuned almost, out about five minutes Almost ago. beheaded me <laughs> on its way across the table. Um, I did wrap Who my own this? gift. Marketing no did idea. not wrap my gift. Did the oh, production okay. department so, marketing didn't wrap your gift? No, I wrapped my if gift. I, knew I can't marketing, believe they're getting credit I, I for gonna, my beautifully wrapped gift. I was going gift. to guess you, but then, but then they told me I couldn't, couldn't put any weight on the wrapping. Well, they lied. Did you not wrap your gift? Um, no comment. What did y'all bring a Secret Santa gift not wrapped? Mrs. Saxon wrapped mine, to be honest. Oh, okay. So you did bring it wrapped. Where did my glasses go? That's not a book. It's a planner. A is this because month personal Is this because Martin doesn't show up for the podcast that you've scheduled, Shane? Could well, it possibly I who be got this for Martin? Uh, I, <laughs> I bet you I know. <laughs> I just thought, Martin. It would be nice if you had a planner. That's all this gift was is, about. Is okay? There was no message. <laughs> okay. And if you had... I, no, I would have guessed that would have been from Tanya. Oh, but. true. If you had already had that planner... Don't toss it to me, please. I, <laughs> I can't figure out how to The close knife the needs to go away. <laughs> if, if you had had that planner, then you would have probably had a book for this book exchange and known that you did not give War and Peace to Paul. The... <laughs> Okay, they're all after me, so can I have that knife back, please? <laughs> I believe this gift is for you. It's very large. It is very that large. That is the biggest book I've it's ever seen. silver. It's shiny. It is. I don't know that this is a book. I thought it was supposed to be a book. I, I That was what I was under the impression of. Bryce, you made the rules. Was it supposed to be a book? Well, clearly. <laughs> okay. It's a print product. <laughs> Oh gosh! Now we have to have the knife again. Oh, maybe not. So it's in a, yep. in a box with a p- single, a big box, a lone piece of. Tape. Yes, that's nice. Okay, so the only two people that could have given me this is Paul or Martin, and we know Martin didn't do any of his own work. Okay. Oh, that's a more reasonably oh, is, sized book. It feels yeah. like a book. Why is it in such a giant box? Oh, because it came unwrapped and y'all had to wrap it. That's why it's in one of your books. One of your. Okay, this is from Martin because it's used. <laughs> Another way to say that is it vintage. is the snare by Raphael Sabatini, which I do like him, and I haven't read anything else by him. And I'm so happy that you texted me last night to see what was going on with the book exchange, and then you. Went to your bookshelf and grabbed a used book off of it that you've probably read. That is not true. Huh? I, I got it out of the trunk of my car. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, my you know my Christmas is made. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, so now we know that who is, gave. I, I did just okay. read that, and you will love that. You will love that. Okay, well, and, and now hold on. Since since everybody knows who this gift came from, I have to I have to admit, Shane, that as I was thinking about wrapping your gift, I thought. I would love to wrap it in butcher paper from like venison that I pulled out of the freezer. Sure. But then I thought, you know, because the, in honor of your first deer this year. Thank you. But I, I decided clean butcher paper would be a better, Thank better you. option. Thank you for doing that. Was that was very kind. Oh, and it's a book, The End of the Affair by Graham oh, Greene. One of your favorite fiction. authors. Fiction. Yes. Yeah. Fiction. And fiction, which I need to read more of. Thank you. And you're doing a good job of reading fiction. In I honor of the Graham Greene going. Centennial, 2004. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll 18 glad, years ago <laughs> glad to celebrate that as well well that it's was a good pretty fun. one it, it was, was really fun. good fun very joyous and yeah. so in character yes exactly because it segues <laughs> to a christmas carol which is a book all about christmas joy now i want to start here are there any adaptations that you all particularly like of a christmas carol have you ever gone and seen any play versions of a christmas carol it's one of the most frequently adapted stories i feel like in our in our culture um, I don't have a specific reason I'm asking this question. I'll answer last. My relationship to it. But Martin, do you have any adaptations you like? The Muppets Christmas Carol. That's classic. <clears throat> I really do. <clears throat> I love the Muppets it, it Christmas actually is Carol. Pretty, too. Very good. You know, as 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 well as any adaptation uh with puppets clings, goes. You know, <laughs> is, is, yeah, it cling, clings to the uh, uh, original. It's you know, n- none of them are are terribly uh, literal, but but I I I think it's a great. I mean, uh, Michael Caine mm-hmm. is, is Scrooge. Um, 
Yeah, I, I thought it was Can't great. Beat the Muppet. Muppets. Yeah, Can't Beat the Muppets. That, yeah. I believe, is the only adaptation I've seen oh, really? that comes to mind. That's what I'm... Well, I went to a play at oh, yeah. our local um, theater, and it was very well done. But I haven't watched... My husband, every um, Christmas Eve when he was putting together things to go under the tree, he would al- always... The George C. Scott yes. one would come on at like midnight, and he would watch it in the middle of the night while I was sleeping. That is a great version. And he was building toys. So... um I haven't seen it, but I know it is his favorite. But yeah. I, I really have only seen it live or or the Muppets when my kids were little. <laughs> sure, Paul, you said you haven't seen any adaptations except for the Muppets, or you have? Anybody? No, I I believe the Muppets is it. Um, but it was something that was a regular when I was younger. Like, I mean, I think middle school, high school, we'd probably watch it every year. Yeah. Watch the Muppets Christmas Carol, maybe. <laughs> Well, can I comment on that? Because normally you don't like adaptations that are sort of ironic. Mm. But Dickens' sense of humor, I think the reason that you could have the Muppets do this thing and have it succeed is because Dickens' humor is is so ever-present in his, Mm. really in all his works, but particularly I think in this one, that that... It fits. There's a wink and nod fits. throughout. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's it's very hard to portray, um, you know, the ghost of Christmas present if you don't have the something beyond the real, mm-hmm. right? I mean, you know, the way Dickens portrays him or the the ghost of Christmas future, like it being set in the Muppet world allows them to actually really portray him. The way Dickens, like when the when I was reading rereading this and reading about the ghost of Christmas present like i was just envisioning the muppets ghost of christmas present <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and they really almost to a to a t replicated the way dickens describes them except he's made out of felt yeah let's yeah. Come, let's come back to that because i do think adaptation of the spirits is one of the most interesting parts of trying to perform this this novel as a play or movie um but it, i i think i had a unique relationship to this book as a kid because one when i was 10 I was cast in a local liberal arts college uh, performance as the street urchin who sings my <laughs> God rest you married gentlemen. And we had a, a dog who sat next to me while I sang it. It was, I think Aww, it was. Oh, how cute. Yeah, I, I think I probably could have won an award for that. Did you, but you <laughs> sang the song. I did. As a solo? As, yes, as a 10 year old. Wow. Boy, you know, wow. Yeah, impressive. It was, yeah, it was quite impressive. <laughs> um, the, I saw that same college later perform the play and I saw a second adaptation with a different director. Um, I saw it at the Milwaukee Performing Arts Center, a very well done uh, version of it. And then the three film versions that I've seen are the Muppets, the uh, George, George, C. George, C. Scott. George C. Scott version. And then there's a recent um, animated version um, that was very interesting. It was uh, mm. kind of in the form, in the same animation style as Polar Express, mm. so, but r- really well done. Um, and so I, I've, I've loved seeing the different ways that they adapt and, and then reading this and seeing some of it is so familiar, having, you know, heard the adaptations over and well, over. Well, and the thing about the better adaptations is the better adaptations are the things that are closest to what Dickens did. Mm-hmm. It's not, you know, a lot of things you got to, you know, you take an old book and you kind of got to really change a lot of things in order to make it right. You don't have to change much in this to make it No, it's very simple. Yeah, it's it's very a very simple, simple mm-hmm. plot line. <clears throat> That is, yeah, I can see that you could mm-hmm. easily streamline it and keep it as close as possible. Something like Dombey and Son. <laughs> I right, mean, there's right. no way mm-hmm. it would be like uh, Peter Jackson would do it in three different yeah. movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although this, this, um, you know, there is something, and I, it's it's hard to figure out the cause and effect here, but there's something Dickensian about the way we celebrate Christmas. Is that because of the story mm. or is it because he just, he just, he's the one who really managed to capture it. Captured yeah. that spirit. Yeah. Originally it, yeah. popularizing even the phrase, Merry Christmas. Yes. Right. Is a, a Dickensian phrase. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to dive into that and the adaptation of the ghost story. But before we do that, we're actually going to take a short break and hear a Christmas message from Memorial Press. I've always thought of Christmas time as a kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. The only time in the long calendar of the year when men and women seem by one consent to open their shut up hearts freely. 
We all know Christmas is a wonderful time, a time to reflect upon our present blessings, of which all men have many, and not on our past misfortunes, of which all men have some. I believe that Christmas has done me good and will do all of us good. And so we at the press, the college, and the online academy say, God bless it. God bless it. God bless it. God bless it. And God bless us all. And may it be said of you and me and all of us that we know how to keep Christmas well. That we know how to honor Christmas in our hearts and how to share it wherever we go. From all of us here at Memoria Press, we wish you a bountiful and generous Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas from our family to yours. And a Happy New Year to all the world. God bless us, everyone. I want to ask you this question, tying into what Martin was talking about. What do we think it was so powerful about this story that it's taken such root in the cultural consciousness and its association with A Christmas Carol? Can you put into words what makes this story so powerful? I think probably first of all, I mean, it's a, it's a story of conversion, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, and I mean, I was thinking about this as I was reading it. I mean, the picture that's painted of Christmas with Fezziwig, with the Cratchits, you know, they're, they're just having, uh, uh, Scrooge's nephew, they're just having a grand old time. And I sat there going, but in real life, Christmas can be difficult, right? You have the struggles, you know, maybe you don't get along with your family perfectly, maybe, you know, or you get family now, or, you know, the, the, the financial struggles of how are we going to afford what, you know, uh, those around us expect, you know, or, you know, it can, you know, the meal can be expensive or it's a lot of work to put that meal on. And just realizing that in, in, in the, for me, it was the, it was the, the ghost of Christmas present sprinkling his torch on things Mm -hmm. so that those things fade away. Mm. Right. And the idea that we can all put aside everything for a while Mm. and, and learn to live in that peace and in that hope that the holiday itself speaks to us of. Yeah. Danny, why do you think that this, this story is so important? I agree with Paul that it's a conversion story, but I'm not sure that I, f- I feel like, I mean, this is truly for me, it feels like a Christian allegory, but I don't really think Dickens wrote it as a Christian mm-hmm. allegory. I don't think this is a Narnia mm-hmm. book at all I, right. because it's just not who he was and what right. he did. He wrote about social issues, social justice, poverty based on his own life. And I think that's where this came from. Mm-hmm. That's just purely speculation on my part, but just I've read a lot of Dickens. and um, but But to me, it becomes and maybe Maybe that's why it has the staying power that it does. It, it it really does become an allegory for the way we should live our lives and for for the things, you know, we all do have past that hurt us and that possibly if we could just remove those things, which is what the ghost of Christmas past helped him to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, because you saw, and I'd forgotten this, that you see he start he transforms after the ghost of Christmas past when he is reminded of his past and of the hurt and of the decision that he made to choose money over anything else based on his past that at that point his transformation really happens and I hadn't remembered that Mm -hmm. that it was so early in the book so I think for me to read it I put a lot more importance in it i think than dickens Mm. would have but i do think also i mean it does there's so much joy in here so many joyous scenes of people just loving each other and appreciating what they have even if it's nothing but just appreciating having their family it's a it's um and it's short it's you know you can get through it very easily so it's it is easy but it, I was trying to think, is there anything else that would be on this level as a Christmas story of fiction that I, don't, I couldn't think of anything that, I, that would be comparable to this? 
as far as staying power. I, I agree. Your comments reminded me of an adaptation that we forgot to mention, which is A Wonderful Life. Mm. Kind of a, a loose adaptation, but one of the, the reason I thought of it is because you said that the transformation begins after the ghost of Christmas past. And in A Wonderful Life, really the only ghost that comes, mm-hmm. you know, is is the past. And that's mm. what yes. affects this transformation. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Martin, what about you? Why do you think that this novel is so important, has such staying power? <clears throat> well, I, I think that what Dickens has a way of of capturing these universal types and truths in in a person, in a character, in a way that very few other writers are able to do. And and he has this ability to make you see the whole of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, 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 you know, he's, he's personifying in one sense, and yet somehow he's making you see some great reality. This this and it's all done in, in laughter. There's somebody 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 someone talks about the laughter at the heart of things, mm-hmm. and Dickens understands the laughter at the heart of things. And it's not a light kind of laughter. It's a very, in a way, a kind of grave kind of laughter. There's a lot of gravity in It's in the this ghost book. of Christmas presents yes. jolly laughter right. that's deep and resonant. Right. But, and the nephew uh, has this crazy, there's this crazy scene with the nephew that is where he just is laughing at everything. And I thought, mm-hmm. I thought that was kind of odd. Yeah, yeah I mean, well, and I think Scrooge, when, it, when the first time he laughs, like it, Dickens spends a lot of time describing mm-hmm. it. Because he's like a laugh nobody would have imagined Scrooge to have. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and 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 it's it's um, somehow that that laughter, and I haven't thought it through enough, is is related to this this vision of the wholeness of things. Because how do you get this vision of the wholeness of things? You have to see them in the past, in the present, in the future, in order for you to see the significance of your situation. And so that's what he does in here. He, 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 he requires Scrooge, who is not, all he's seeing is his own little situation. He's not seeing the actual human uh, consequences of the way he's treating people. He just doesn't see it. And Dickens, using this past, present, and future, makes him see the significance of, of himself and his role in the world and and this kind of thing. And I, I, it's I really think it's brilliant. brilliant. Yeah, it really is brilliant. <laughs> Look at us talking, saying the same thing at the same time. We're kindred spirits. <laughs> yeah. Let me think about that for a while. <laughs> so let's return to Paul's question. And that is one of the most um, important aspects of the novella are the three ghosts or spirits. And the way that they're represented isn't totally concrete. The Christmas present is pretty concrete, but the ghost of Christmas past is a little amorphous. Um, and then also the ghost of Christmas future is kind of a vague Grim Reaper figure. What do you all think of of the ghosts? I've seen adaptations. You know, the Muppets we talked about, the Ghost of Christmas Past, I think is a young girl, I believe, if I remember correctly. A young girl? Mm-hmm. As a young child, I'm not a sure. Young child. I, uh, yeah. And, and it's a little different there. I've seen uh, a, a adaptation where the Ghost of Christmas uh, future are three Grim Reaper figures that are mm-hmm. kind of surrounding and boxing yeah. in. Mm-hmm. Scrooge as he's going towards the tombstone. So uh, different directors have kind of imagined creatively how to represent what isn't a totally concrete image. What do, what do y'all think of the, the ghosts? Um, well, I, I think what was surprising to me, something that I hadn't recognized before, was at the end of um, his time with the Ghosts of Christmas Past where he's getting, he, he's getting really frustrated because the Ghosts of Christmas Past keep showing him more mm. which is more, hurtful to him which is hurtful Painful. and he um you know and it says uh the spirit he, he sees screws sees sees the extinguisher cap and by sudden action press it down upon its head the spirit dropped beneath it so that the extinguisher covered its whole form but though scrooge pressed it down with all its force he could not hide the light which streamed from under it in an unbroken flood upon the ground. So, you know, this idea, I mean, Scrooge kind of, I mean, he, he, as much as he's changing because he says, Mm -hmm. I want to say something to Cratchit. I want, you know, I wish I could, I wish I could say something different to my nephew. He, you know, he gets so hurt by continuing to see how his Christmases have, have changed that he, he's able to actually extinguish it, which I thought. But he doesn't extinguish it. Well, um, he can't extinguish it. 
Yes, he but then he gets, he gets exhausted. He gave the cap a parting squeeze in which his hand relaxed and had barely time to reel to bed before he sank into a heavy sleep. So, I mean, it, no, he doesn't He doesn't fully extinguish it, but... but it's that, an unbroken flood upon the ground. Yeah, but I never realized, like, he tried to put his head, his hands mm-hmm. on a spirit, right? Like, this is... Oh, oh. This oh. is what he's doing. Go for I it. I thought that was a really... I'm glad you said that. He segued. It's a great segue. Can I, can I go with the segue? Oh, absolutely. You've never I asked thought, before. I thought, I really... <laughs> <laughs> I have never asked before. It's the Christmas spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was interesting that touch is a huge part of this. Mm-hmm. You know, like he, the spirit said, you will be fine. You just have to touch me. That's right. And it reminded me of something that I looked up this morning in Mere Christianity that C.S. Lewis said. He said, we love and reason because God loves and reasons and holds our hand while we do it. While we do it, that that you know that you're safe with the spirit that mm. you, but you have to hold on to it. And I think the the light thing that he couldn't extinguish it totally. I totally get why he tried to, because it was that was the most painful part of the book to me was him seeing his past was that you can't extinguish your past, but you can. But if you keep that spirit with you, then it then you can go beyond your past. You know, that mm-hmm. spirit was taking him. I'm, this is total speculation. <laughs> well, you, this is a yeah, you, you can kind of cover it up, but you can't. You can, you can, you right. can cover it up that's or right. you can let it, def- uh, uh, it can impel you to change the way you're going to live now and in the future. Right. And then that's, your, yes. that was your point about yes. it, the past already changed him before he even saw what was going on in his own day and what, and how, his, what would go on in the future. Mm-hmm. In, in, in part of, part of, uh, Scrooge's problem is that he's isolated. Mm. He's he's isolated himself. Mm -hmm. And what that just prevents you from having experiences of the world. You're not touching things anymore. And, you know, if you isolate yourself like that, you get like he was. And the cure for it is to simply experience things again. Mm. Uh, uh, uncover the things that you've been covering up. Uh, but that go takes out courage. In the world. It does take courage because once you're used to that kind of lifestyle, you you don't realize how much you don't like it. And how I thought it was interesting at the end how hard it was for him to go to those places where he needed to ask forgiveness, and you know how difficult it was to walk into the joyous settings where he may not be welcome mm-hmm. because of his past actions. Mm-hmm. But can just on before you leave the ghosts, why do you think like the ghost of Christmas present was a giant? I I I feel like I missed something there yeah. about those. I understand the Grim Reaper mm-hmm. character totally. It, it's it's the but, largest thing for the same reason the, the nearest telephone pole is the largest thing in your vision. The present is the thing mm. biggest oh, I, in your oh, vision. Yes. Whereas vision. the past is like a child. Uh, it, 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 the way he describes it is he's like a child, but like an old man. Yeah, he's a strange figure. And like he a child got older. Yet, no, no, not yet. No, not so like a child is like an old man. And so the the past is fading away, right? And but that's it's why still it's a small. part of that. Spirit. Still a part, but it's mm-hmm. still it's but it's smaller. Whereas the ghost of Christmas present is just looming large. Yeah, looms large in your but vision. Then, yeah. But then the I, I didn't take as much time as I should have to think about at the end of the Ghost of Christmas Present, he's got those two um, urchins. Ignorance and want. Oh, ignorance yeah. exactly. want. Great segue. It's exactly yeah. what I wanted to ask you about. Ignorance this- of what and want of what. And and he says, beware of them both, but beware most of all of the boy the, of ignorance. Right. For on his brow I see that written which is doom unless the writing be erased. I, I don't... I don't I didn't know what to do with that either. What are you doing with that? Well, I think that it's it's the want of people who have not received Christmas generosity is Mm -hmm. something that will destroy their society, the orphans and the widows. And then it's ignorance of the way that wealth doesn't satisfy and doesn't please. And that's those are the two things that Scrooge has made choices thinking he's going to find happiness in life. Mm-hmm. And that was an ignorant thought. I don't know. That's my, that's well, my guess. Well, hold on. Hold on. So you just said um, you have the needy. They have the want, right? And, and they're not receiving that generosity. 
but ignorance um, of that then by receiving those things, they, it's still not going to fill them completely. Is that what you said, right? So, which is an interesting tension that we hold, right? Because at Christmas, we are very um, lavish oftentimes with what we have, right? We People will save for months to be able to buy their kids Christmas gifts and, and have a nice meal and things. And it, it's almost saying, it, at the same time, we can hold this intention of, that stuff's important because it it shows meaning. It, it it brings this 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 coming together. But if we put our entirety in those things rather than actually helping people, mm. then that isn't that is an ignorant action, mm. and and that will lead us to our doom. I hadn't thought about that until you said that. Martin, any stab at who ignorance and want are or what they represent? I, I really don't. I had kind of. Here's a picture of them. Oh, there, right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I have not recently read this book. I, I have read it many times and have taught it. And it's amazing the, the number of things that you forget. It's actually in, in that planner. Oh, it's in the planner. Okay. Yes. Yes. And I actually, well, I, didn't feel, I didn't, you know, you don't feel like if you've read it. 12 times already, sure, what you really, but you, so, you do need to read it. And I, Cause I was sitting here thinking, you know, I haven't read this in so long. Yes. I because, need to read it again let after me, the show. Right. <laughs> I, so I gave it to him last week and I said, here's the, the, the Christmas Carol book that we are giving away. And we want to use that one. So when we talk about things, we can go to page numbers and we're all going to use the same one. So when we do the podcast next week, this is the one that you, probably want to reread and make notes in. He said, oh, okay, okay. So this morning he's going down the steps and I'm behind him. And I said, do you have your Christmas carol book? And he's like, oh, I don't have that one. I said, well, but yes, a week ago, I put it on your desk, talked to you about it. So we went and we dug and literally it was covered up by a pile, probably six inches high of catalog proofs. Other things that he said he's going to read. Yes. Point, yeah. Receipts. Now, Martin, you did, read the, you did write this back cover, right? Or who, who wrote this? That we it's a reference our... to Chesterton, so most likely Martin. Yeah, so why would I need to read a book that I wrote <laughs> I mean, the back cover? It's, it's very for. good. It's very what? good. <laughs> but I think, Martin, your point is just to say that there's so many details in this novella that are vivid in particular, like ignorance mm-hmm. and want coming out mm-hmm. from under yeah. well, talons And, and they come Christmas. out from the ghost robes, yes. right? So it's like, mm. as he's yes. fading away, he leaves ignorance and want. Mm. And so he has come and tried to bring this joy, but as he disappears, as Christmas, Christmas day closes, then these are these two kids that we have to take care of. Right. Any last comments on the third ghost, the ghost of Christmas future? I mean, maybe the most straightforward, <laughs> um, but the way he sets it up is that it's not, you You know who I've, these people are talking about, but you don't know for sure. I find it unbelievable that Scrooge didn't realize he was the dead man in sure. the bed. <laughs> I just, I really struggled with that because I thought, I just wanted to scream, it's you, it's yeah. you. Well, but I, I can see in this, in the situation he's in and things are really kind of vague and unclear at the time. I mean, you, you've read the story. He, right. He hadn't read the story yet. Right. Uh, Tanya, when was the last time you saw yourself dead in a bed? Yeah. Well, yeah. not I mean, recently. Yeah. So I, I think in I the think context. I think it was it just all leading to this point so that we could have the climax of him seeing the tomb with his name on mm-hmm. it. Yeah. And, and I, I think if, you know, being, being old now, uh, you, you, you really start and I think this is, I would assume, fairly common among older people that you, you, you are, you are visited by all the ghosts, mm. you know, and you are faced with thinking more concretely about what happens now and what's going to happen in, in the future. And you, you start seeing the significance of things in a way you never saw them before. I mean, if you're, if you're living a, a, any kind of, you know, life worth living and, uh, and so you just things change for you, mm. and and uh, what are you going to do with what, it? What what am I going to do with it? What legacy am I going to mm. leave? What you start thinking about all those questions because you've seen all the ghosts now. Yeah. I think you know I made the comment that I didn't think this was a Christian allegory that that wasn't what Dickens was doing at all. But I just turned to page ninety one at the end of um, 
the Christmas past at the very end, when he says, I am not the man I was, I will not be the man I must have been, but for this intercourse, why show me this if I am past all hope? I do think there's got to be, there's got to be some kind of Christian thought that Dickens put into this whole thing. I just, I don't know. I don't think, I don't know that he ever. Well, and, and this is, you know, this story makes me think of all these debates we have about the secularization of Christmas, because in one sense, this is a very secular story. But I think, I think if you, if you're familiar with Dickens, you, you, you read his stories and they're secular too, in many ways. Mm -hmm. And, and, and Dickens was not an Orthodox Christian. He, 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 he did not believe in the deity of Christ, but, um, but he has this, and, and maybe it's because of the culture that he is from. He's an Englishman living at the end of the 19th century, which itself has secularized. But you still, it, it, the, the, Christ, the Christianity influences everything, even though most of the people don't believe in it anymore. And, and so I, I, think, um, I think this is like a lot of his books, which you read and you think, well, there's no explicit Christianity in here. But it's implicit everywhere, mm -hmm. and I, I think this is just the really, in a way, the greatest example of this. That all the things, all the values, all that, all the things that he is uh, commending to the reader in this book come from Christianity. Mm -hmm. They do, and, and he's not ignorant of that. I don't think. Right? Could he have made a different choice, though? That last paragraph, holding up his hands in a last prayer to have his fate reversed, he saw an alteration in the phantom's hood and dress. It shrunk, collapsed, and dwindled down into a bedpost. If he hadn't said, I'm going to be a different person, and that most famous line, I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. He, if he could have made a different choice. Sure. Well, I mean, you, yes, he could have. And the reality is, it's, it's, I just noticed this. Tell me how I may sponge away the writing on the stone. I mean, the reality is, he's going to die regardless of what he does. Right. And it's not really that he wants to get the writing off the stone. He wants, he wants it he to wants, be different. He when wants he it dies. to be different. He wants people to, he wants his legacy. Him. He to wants be his different. legacy to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've talked about the ghosts. There are a couple of other vignettes that are interesting. Do you, do you all have any thoughts about the uh, Cratchit family oh, I'd love and the their Cratchit role family. in the novella? It's funny that the, all the women are just anti-Scrooge because they see how their um, husband and father. <laughs> sure. Yeah. My, mm -hmm. my wife likes to watch the Muppet Christmas Carol just to watch Miss Piggy play oh. Cratchit's wife. <laughs> <laughs> and what she has to say about Scrooge, right. which is very I, definitive. But yeah. Bob Cratchit is, I mean, he's a heroic mm -hmm. character. Yeah. But also, I, I mean, I think one of the major things is Scrooge sees his interactions with people as ending at that other person, right? So he he pays Bob Cratchit for his work, and that's the end of it for him, right? right? But when he sees in... in the future that tiny Tim will die. That's when he realizes that it's based on his decisions of how he's treating Bob. That's that might define whether tiny Tim can live or die. And I think that's, it's a very weighty thing that our, our relationships, not just me to you, but me to you and those people that you touch. Yes. Too. Which goes right back to how Martin started the whole thing that it, we, we, he got where he couldn't see beyond himself mm -hmm. and this forced him to see. And we all, I mean, I think there's a lesson in this for all of us. And again, this is typical Dickens. I mean, this is what he mm -hmm. does in his novels. It you know, is. he makes you see something that you haven't seen before. And he, by through showing you characters who see what they have not seen before. In your uh, alternate reality lived Christmas Carol continuation story of your mind, does Tiny Tim live after Scrooge? Converts. It, it says it he, says he did that not he, die. He did not die. It doesn't say why. I that was. I, I don't know if it was because now know. they had the money to get all the care for him that they needed. Yeah, it's on the bottom of page ninety nine. Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all and infinitely more. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was in a second small father. Caps. 
in small caps. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, it was he was going to die directly because of, as Paul said, Scrooge's Scroogeness. <laughs> I, I read that a little differently. But <laughs> how did you read it? Well, I thought that that was just saying he didn't die that Christmas. But I mean, it seems like Christmas, mm. the Ghost of Christmas uh, present, right? Says, no, it was Ghost of Christmas Future where they saw that he was dead, right? Well, they see that he's dead, but the other ghost says, "I see a a." Uh, Oh, crutch, a crutch sitting in the corner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I took that as he died. I, uh, you know, I, and I, Paul and I want it to be that him not to die. Well, does, and in well, uh, the in the Muppets, he doesn't die. He so, sure. so wait, so so that he died this very Christmas. Well, because it's a ghost. No, Christmas not necessarily, but I think that. Event like he's not going to have it a looks long like, you life. know, he, the crutch is there and he's not. I mean, well, right, that right. Mean? But he doesn't but, because he becomes a second father too. Because him. Scrooge, Scrooge changes and it says he did not die. Yeah, that die. seems like pretty persuasive evidence. Yeah, I had, it, okay. and, he and, became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the good old city knew. He also lived with no further intercourse with spirits, but lived upon the total asp- abstinence principle. Pretty great line. (laughs) There's a lot of humor in here. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of humor. So we talked about the Cratchits. There's the nephew, the Fezziwigs. What are there any other passages you would want to highlight and and talk about from a Christmas Carol? Have we left any meat on the bone? Um, I um I had a thought last night, and it was (laughs) one thought. Oh no, that was about Don Quixote. Actually, sorry. Mm-hmm. Gonna, uh, m- move on. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna stay in the different Christmas podcast. Spirit. Different podcast. Johnny, any any other underlines? Or I see you have a lot in there that you wanted I, to talk about no, today. No, I think we've talked about everything yeah. that I. I think the um, passage. I mean, that I think we could talk, and talk me. and talk. Passage that most affected me is this one in the back. Yeah, the one you, uh, the one oh, you please. wrote. Yeah. <laughs> Are you if we sure you even wrote I'm not wrote even that? credited in here. I, I doubt you wrote this. I did. Dude, I remember so you writing You remember writing? To answer Shane's that. question, <laughs> I would say I, I actually very much enjoyed the passage where Scrooge is seeing his nephew and their, and, and their group talk about him mm. and how even like – they were doing it in a way that they were like, Oh, this is Scrooge. But they, but they laughed about it. Like it, it wasn't, it, I don't, I never got the impression that he was hurt by what they were saying. It was true, but they were always welcoming to him. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was a very interesting balance of where he felt like he would still be welcomed because the nephew had come time and time again. But in the midst of that, they were still like, but yeah, you know, seeing seeing people talk about you outside of your your mm. presence because in in so many ways we are the way we think other people see us, mm. and to to witness the way other people see us can be a big blow because it's not the way you see yourself and it affects the way you see yourself. Yeah. But but I think what the what the nephew and his group were showing was that they saw that he could be somebody else. But they recognized where the he was. The nephew did see he yeah. could be somebody else. I'm not sure anybody else did. They, they were generous. And so they, they would have been generous mm-hmm. to anyone. And it was a matter of Scrooge kind of saying, being, I will accept that generosity. Accept generosity. Right. Yeah. I thought, just this is funny. You can cut it if you want to. <laughs> um, but when he goes to There's the a big Cratchits. Ha in the margin. I know. He, when he, <laughs> I just found it and I just thought, this is really just, this is just an example of the humor that's all the way through here. When he goes and tells Bob Cratchit he's going to raise his salary, and it says Bob trembled and got a little nearer to the ruler. He had a momentary idea of knocking Scrooge down with it, holding him and calling to the people in the court for help in a straight waistcoat. He <laughs> <laughs> thought he'd gone totally insane. <laughs> well, it's a very funny book. It's a very wonderful story. I hope everyone reads it. I've enjoyed this conversation. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Classical Etc. If you enjoyed this conversation, please consider liking this video. If you want to join the conversation, then you can comment below. And if you want to stay connected, please subscribe to our channel. I hope you enjoyed this show and we'll see you next time.